Hi, it's Chris from Chris and Acrylic Pouring. We're based in East Sussex in the UK and this is the dried version of the painting that I'll be demonstrating today. I do hope you enjoy the video. I've been working on horizon paintings and for this you need to have some relatively straight lines for the actual horizon part of the painting. Now I wanted to see if I could get some curvy sky parts to the um, horizon paintings. So I've been trying to think about ways to do this and this technique I'm just going to try is pouring the bottom part of the painting and tilting so I've got the straight lines and then adding the sky part where I'm tilting again to get more movement. I wanted to do it like this to, and give the bottom part of the painting time just to settle a bit because I wanted to see how much tilting I could get away with on the sky part before it affected the bottom straight lines. I'm using an old um, canvas, this is from last year where I was um, testing balloon rolls. So it was just a test canvas and it was perfect to um, try this technique on. In total I'm going to be using five flip cups. So the first three I'm going to flip first and then I'll do the last two which were meant to be the sky. So the first flip cup is meant to be kind of dark landscape. So I used yellow ochre, Payne's grey, white, black, yellow ochre and Payne's grey. The second cup is going to be the strip of gold, the horizon layer. So I had um, gold, black and then gold. The third cup was meant to be the start of the dark cloud or kind of mountains depending on how you looked at it. So I started off with black, iridescent silver, Payne's grey, a wee bit more silver and I finished with a Prussian blue because this was going to be starting to hit where the sky was and using the Prussian blue would work with the other blues that I was using in the sky. So I'm not using any silicon at all and once the cups were um, filled I flipped them all over and then as usual just a wee tap for good luck. The cups have been sitting on the canvas for a couple of minutes and then I did my pour back. So I was trying to spread the paint as far down the canvas as possible. Now because this was just a test canvas, I did this rather quickly. So the video is sped up but I wasn't taking as much care as I usually do. So you can see I'm using the beautiful technique of extreme tilting. <laughs> I wasn't being careful, I just wanted to get the canvas covered. I did actually use a side of a paint spreader just to pull out some of the shapes as well. Once I had finished tilting I did give it a wee torch and you can see that I've got lots of white in the bottom part which was driving me nuts because I didn't actually think I had put too much white in there, but I obviously did. So then I went straight on filling up my cup. So the bottom part of the painting had been sitting there, but not for too long, but it still meant it would interact with the sky colours that I was pouring now. So the fourth cup had cerulean blue, sky blue, which was a custom mix I'd made up, Payne's grey and then cerulean. And then the darker sky colour, the fifth cup, started off with Prussian blue, cerulean blue, phalo blue, sky blue, and then phalo blue. So these two cups were representing a kind of um, sky and clouds sweeping down the canvas a bit. Then I wanted it to have a bit of movement. So when I placed them on the canvas, I put one in the middle and one on the end. When I released the paint I was doing a sort of curved and upwards kind of movement and I wanted this to help with um, portraying a kind of sweeping dramatic sky. So I sped up the video again now and I'm doing some real extreme tilting and I just wanted to see if the straight lines below would stay straight and you can see I'm really tilting and just moving the paint and just trying to get a sweeping dramatic sky. I needed to do this quite in an extreme way because I wanted to see how much I could get away with without disturbing the paint below. And you'll see that there was some movement in the straight lines. So when I'm doing this on a larger canvas, I wouldn't be so dramatic, but as it was a test piece, I just went for it. For a lot of my larger canvases, I do do, I do, do test pieces because um, you use so much paint using this technique that you want to make sure you're going to be happy with the end result. 
The only issue I have with using a smaller test canvas is you don't quite get the same effect from the um, paint merging together. This technique works a lot better on larger canvases. Here's the dried painting and you can see that the horizon levels are relatively straight even though I was doing some extreme tilting. So I, it's something I can bear in mind for future horizon um, or landscape paintings. The gold um, ribbon looks really lovely and the iridescent silver just gives it a really lovely shimmer. The bottom white in the painting really kills me, it still kills me because there's just a wee bit too much of it. But overall, as a test piece, it was a success. I did want to say thank you so much for joining me on this journey and I hope you're learning as much as I'm learning. It is such great fun and you never quite know what you're going to get and sometimes you get truly terrible disasters but it's the ones that work, they're just so worth the whole process. If you do want to see further paintings please do subscribe, every subscription means a lot to us. Do take care and I will be speaking to you soon. Bye.